Numismatics, Wikipedia article audio. Numismatics is the study or collection of currency, including coins, tokens, paper money, and related objects. While numismatists are often characterized as students or collectors of coins, the discipline also includes the broader study of money and other payment media used to resolve debts and the exchange of goods. Early money used by people is referred to as odd and curious, but the use of other goods in barter exchange is excluded, even where used as a circulating currency. The Kyrgyz people used horses as the principal currency unit and gave small change in lambskins, the lambskins may be suitable for numismatic study, but the horses are not. Many objects have been used for centuries, such as kari shells, precious metals, cocoa beans, large stones, and gems. Etymology History of Money History of Numismatics Modern Numismatics Subfields Numismatists List of publicly displayed numismatic collections List of important numismatic scholars Today, most transactions take place by a form of payment with either inherent, standardized, or credit value. Numismatic value is the value in excess of the monetary value conferred by law, which is known as the collector value. Economic and historical studies of money's use and development are an integral part of the numismatist's study of money's physical embodiment. First attested in English 1829, the word numismatics comes from the adjective numismatic, meaning of coins. It was borrowed in 1792 from French numismatiques itself a derivation from late Latin numismatis, genitive of numisma, a variant of nomisma meaning coin. Nomisma is a Latinization of the Greek nu mu iota sigma mu alpha which means current coin slash custom, which derives from nu omicron mu zeta omega, to hold or own as a custom or usage, to use customarily, in turn from nu mu omicron, usage, custom, ultimately from nu mu omega, I dispense, divide, assign, keep, hold. Throughout its history, money itself has been made to be a scarce good, although it does not have to be. Many materials have been used to form money, from naturally scarce precious metals and kari shells through cigarettes to entirely artificial money, called fiat money such as banknotes. Many complementary currencies use time as a unit of measure, using mutual credit accounting that keeps the balance of money intact. Modern money is essentially a token and abstraction. Paper currency is perhaps the most common type of physical money today. However, goods such as gold or silver retain many of the essential properties of money such as volatility and limited supply. However, these goods are not controlled by one single authority. Coin collecting may have existed in ancient times. Caesar Augustus gave coins of every device, including old pieces of the kings and foreign money as Saturnalia gifts. Petrarch who wrote in a letter that he was often approached by vine diggers with old coins asking him to buy or to identify the ruler, is credited as the first Renaissance collector. Petrarch presented a collection of Roman coins to Emperor Charles IV in 1355. The first book on coins was De Ct Partibus by Guillaume Bude. During the early Renaissance ancient coins were collected by European royalty and nobility. Collectors of coins were Pope Boniface VIII, Emperor Maximilian of the Holy Roman Empire, Louis XIV of France, Ferdinand I, 
Elector Joachim II of Brandenburg who started the Berlin Coin Cabinet and Henry IV of France to name a few. Numismatics is called the hobby of kings, due to its most esteemed founders. Professional societies organized in the 19th century The Royal Numismatic Society was founded in 1836 and immediately began publishing the journal that became the Numismatic Chronicle. The American Numismatic Society was founded in 1858 and began publishing the American Journal of Numismatics in 1866. In 1931 the British Academy launched the Siloge Numerum Graecorum publishing collections of ancient Greek coinage. The first volume of Siloge of Coins of the British Isles was published in 1958. In the 20th century coins gained recognition as archaeological objects, scholars such as Guido Bruck of the Kust Historisches Museum in Vienna realized their value in providing a temporal context and the difficulty that curators faced when identifying worn coins using classical literature. After World War II in Germany a project, Fundmunzen der Antike was launched, to register every coin found within Germany. This idea found successors in many countries. In the United States, the U.S. Mint established a coin cabinet in 1838 when chief coiner Adam Eckfeld donated his personal collection. William E. Dubois Pledges of History, describes the cabinet. C. Willis Betts' American Colonial History illustrated by contemporary medals set the groundwork for the study of American historical medals. Helen Wong S. A Short History of Chinese Numismatics in European Languages gives an outline history of Western countries' understanding of Chinese numismatics. Modern numismatics is the study of the coins of the mid-17th century onward the period of machine-struck coins. Their study serves more the need of collectors than historians and it is more often successfully pursued by amateur aficionados than by professional scholars. The focus of modern numismatics lies frequently in the research of production and use of money in historical contexts using mint or other records in order to determine the relative rarity of the coins they study. Varieties Mint made errors, the results of progressive dye wear, mintage figures and even the socio-political context of coin mintings are also matters of interest. Exonomia is the study of coin-like objects such as token coins and medals, and other items used in place of legal currency or for commemoration. This includes elongated coins, encased coins, souvenir medallions, tags, badges, counter-stamped coins, wooden nickels, credit cards, and other similar items. It is related to numismatics proper, and many coin collectors are also exonumists. Notably is the study of paper money or banknotes. It is believed that people have been collecting paper money for as long as it has been in use. However, People only started collecting paper money systematically in Germany in the 1920s, particularly the Syrian Sheen Notgeld. The turning point occurred in the 1970s, when Notifoli was established as a separate area by collectors. At the same time, some developed countries such as the United States, Germany, and France began publishing their respective national catalogues of paper money which represented major points of reference literature. Scripophily is the study and collection of stocks and bonds. It is an area of collecting due to both the inherent beauty of some historical documents as well as the interesting historical context of each document. Some stock certificates are excellent examples of engraving. Occasionally, an old stock document will be found that still has value as a stock in a successor company. 
The term numismatist applies to collectors and coin dealers as well as scholars using coins as source or studying coins. The first group chiefly derive pleasure from the simple ownership of monetary devices and studying these coins as private amateur scholars. In the classical field amateur collector studies have achieved quite remarkable progress in the field. Examples are Walter Breen, a well-known example of a noted numismatist who was not an avid collector, and King Farukai of Egypt was an avid collector who had very little interest in numismatics. Harry Bass by comparison was a noted collector who was also a numismatist. The second group are the coin dealers. Often called professional numismatists, they authenticate or grade coins for commercial purposes. The buying and selling of coin collections by numismatists who are professional dealers advances the study of money, and expert numismatists are consulted by historians, museum curators, and archaeologists. The third category are scholar numismatists working in public collections, universities, or as independent scholars acquiring knowledge about monetary devices, their systems, their economy and their historical context. An example would be G. Kenneth Jenkins. Coins are especially relevant as source in the pre-modern period. See also portraits of famous numismatists who died before 1800 and portraits of famous numismatists who died after 1800.